Okay, good evening, everyone, again. Um, one of our parks colleague has just dropped a couple of helpful links in the chat for your reference. Um, these will be important links to reference throughout tonight's program, but also in the future, if you have questions about the project or if you would like to find out more information about the community garden program. Um, everyone, my name is Michelle Nelson, and we are excited to have you here tonight to share information about the Edgewood Community Garden Project. So at, um, to start tonight's program, this is our agenda for tonight. Um, we just conducted our welcome and I'm going to share a couple of ground rules. Um, then we're going to have the introduction of the pros plan by our Parks Planner Coordinator, Christina Sasaki. She will also be sharing information about our site suitability study and our criteria. Next, I will be presenting about the Community Garden Program. Then I will share information about the different typologies. And then lastly, we'll have a presentation or a segment by our landscape architect, Ching Fong Chen, who will be sharing information about the garden concept, timeline, and next steps. Lastly, we'll have a moderated Q&A. So if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A portion. Um, and we will moderate them at the end of the presentation. This presentation is being recorded. Um, if you are not presenting, please feel free to mute yourselves. Um, and Again, if you have questions, please feel free to use the Q&A function or you can put them in the chat and we will get to them at the end of the presentation. Um, this recording will be available at the Parks Project page, which is a link here and it has been shared in the chat. And if you would like to hear more information or learn more information about the Community Garden Program, you can visit our website at montgomeryparks.org slash community dash gardens. Tonight's presenters will be myself, Michelle Nelson, Community Garden Program Manager, and I am in the Horticulture, Forestry, and Environmental Education Division. Then we will have Christina Sasaki, who is the Parks Planner Coordinator and Urban Designer with the Park Planning and Stewardship Division. Then we will have Ching Fong Chen, who is the landscape architect, and she is with the Park Development Division. Christina, I would like to um, turn it over to you to talk more about the pros plan and how we selected our, our site suitability criteria. Thank you, Michelle. Good night, everybody. I'm Christina Sasaki, a park planner who will be giving you a brief overview on how we select this location for a community garden. So you see in this slide here is an illustration of our parks recreation and open space plan uh, that, we, that we use to help us to get state funding for our parks department. The plan helps us determine through survey, benchmark, research of our most popular facilities, pretty much what we need how much and where we need them. The survey also measures the need for future facilities and the priorities for facility investment. Currently, we are looking into a couple of emerging facilities that are shown in this slide, including dog park, pickleball court, soccer court, skate park, and community gardens. For community gardens, a former colleague worked with Michelle in the past few years to develop a suitability study, which process is illustrated in this slide and this screen. First, we have a large inventory of parks. So in the first round of selection, we focus on locations where we had more people. Then we look at our inventory of sites and collect additional data to evaluate and prioritize the options. Then once we have a refined list, we visit the top sites with internal park staff. This slide illustrates some of the criteria used to refine the list of candidate sites for community gardens. We look at how flat was 
uh, the area, the exposure to sunlight, access to water, access to parking, and also visibility and accessibility to the site based on our crime prevention design principles. We want to have eyes on our parks. This slide illustrates another criteria we use to prioritize the list of candidate sites, the waiting list areas. So the areas that are shown in the pale red represent the areas with waiting lists for our community gardens. And the yellow dots represent the location of our existing community garden. In addition to that, we also investigated the field and security data to further prioritize our site. We wanna make sure that we were really uh, trying to distribute the resources in an equitable way. In the next two maps, the darker areas represent the highest concentration of residents that are estimated to be food insecure. In this map are the darker pink areas and the following map would be the darker red areas. So that's where we have the concentration of people that are food insecure. With that, uh, we came up with a preliminary list of ongoing recommended sites for community gardens. And they are five top sites. Kensington Heights Neighborhood Park, Fairland Recreational Park, Stone Hedge Local Park, Calvinter Galway Local Park, and Edgewood Neighborhood Park. Uh, with that, that uh, we also selected three additional sites, uh, Wheaton Regional Park, um, and Long Branch Local Park, and Ridge Row Rec Park. Although those last three sites were selected not through the suitability studies, uh, when we do a selection of sites, we will use different uh, methodologies and sometimes a sector plan or another park study can also offer a candidate for a site selection. That said, uh, I'm finished with this part of the site suitability study and uh, I will be passing to Michelle who is gonna talk about the community garden program. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. So in following up with information about the PROS plan, the Community Garden Program has been in existence for 12 years, and we are currently serving roughly 500 families through our program. We basically offer parkland at a nominal yearly fee for rental for county residents to grow their own food, grow their own small local fruits, um, and we also have people that are growing flowers or um, trying their hand at small shrubs. Um, within our program, we do have a um, slide, I, I don't wanna say sliding scale, but we do have different price ranges and price features for each size of the community garden plot. So our smallest offering is a gardening table, which would be $35. And our largest is 625 square feet, which would be $85 for the year. The community garden plots at Edgewood would be $35 for the whole year. In addition to this nominal fee, Parks provides water, a deer fence, green recycling materials through our other programs, a full-time career position program manager, and additional horticulture staff support. And our programs do feature um, a global presence from other residents throughout the county who are from Cameroon, Kenya, Ethiopia, Nepal, Russia, and many other places across the globe. Our program in its 12 year existence has expanded to have five major priorities. And today um, and the Edgewood Community Garden Projects and our site suitability study really allows us to focus on garden expansion and maintenance. Our second priority is reducing food waste and food recovery. So expanding our food donation programs through the community garden program. We focus also on stakeholder relationships internally and externally. We do provide educational programming and our most recently our program has been focusing on providing accessible gardening options for seniors in the community and for 
for community members with varying um, abilities. So one of our priorities is, is accessibility. Our program traditionally has um, installed or created community gardens that are typically in ground plots that are 200, um, 400 or 625 square feet. And with this new community garden and this new concept, we are examining different typologies and different styles of community gardens that can fit into urban spaces or that can fit into a small, park it, small pocket in different parks across the county, whether on parkland or on private land. In addition to looking at a smaller size, um, we received a lot of feedback from our, just our, our members in the community, but then also some of our community gardeners that some of the offerings were a little bit large. So we started to look at examples and visit different jurisdictions to see what was happening within community gardening. So some of these um, examples, one is from Prince George's County, which is a senior, senior garden. And you can tell that they are growing in small containers. They're also growing in larger raised beds. Then we also visited San Francisco Department of Parks and Recreation, which utilizes different styles of um, raised beds with different heights and different sizes, but all under 200 square feet. And we also visited San Antonio Department of Parks and Recreation, where they are also using raised beds that are smaller and more manageable for people to still grow their own food, their own herbs, and their own um, flowers and other, other plants in the community garden. In addition to how this benefits parks and creates a new concept and a just general new design for our program, there are multiple benefits to residents. Um, this is a new concept that can be easily replicated across parks. And this um, style is, we're hoping that it will help to address food insecurity through community gardening and create a space where community members feel comfortable learning and exchanging knowledge around growing their own food and also creating another opportunity for them to um, experience self-reliance. And it provides a gardening space to apartment, condo, or townhome dwellers in the, in the local community. It's also ideal for populations with limited mobility, which you will see in the design when Ching Fong speaks. All gardening levels are welcome. So this is a space that is welcome for beginners and folks who, who want to have another connection to the land or want to return back to gardening. This is a lower maintenance, smaller space to maintain. So if you have a busy life or if there's just a lot going on, um, it's a lot easier to manage than 200 square feet or a larger space. This is low cost. Again, the plots at Edgewood would be $35 for the year. And you can still grow multiple vegetables, fruits, or flowers utilizing different strategies and techniques like square foot gardening, or even just creating a plan for, for your small space. Lastly, you do have the option to graduate to a larger plot size in the program if you feel you, you hit the expert level. So if you are interested in participating tonight, and we hope that we have some folks that are interested, or we hope that you will share this information with your friends or your neighbors, you can send an email to communitygardens at montgomeryparks.org, expressing your interest, sharing your name and your contact information. And we are going to collect names and that will be one way that we assign community garden plots for Edgewood as a new community garden. Lastly, if you have additional questions about how the community garden program is run, if you would like to see our conditions of use, you can visit our website 
at montgomeryparks.org slash community gardens, I mean, slash community dash gardens backslash. Now I'm going to turn it over to Ching Fong Chen, who is our landscape architect, to share some information about the garden design and the garden concept. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jing Fang Chen, landscape architect. I will go over the site and the concept. Um, this is an aerial map of the overall park. Um, 9.6 acre of Roby Road, and the park have a main entrance from Roby Road and the secondary entrance from the other side. And the yellow bubbled area is the, um, the highlighted area is the proposed community garden site. Um, this area is flat and open and is near the park main entrance and parking lot with um, picnic shelter and playground and the main walkway uh, nearby. Uh, it was identified as a suitable site to introduce a community garden. And North is up. This is a, a summer morning photo of the, the space. Uh, this is a survey. As you can see, there's an existing drinking fountain and the water line. Um, the overall area have about a four foot of a grade change. And there are a few insignificant trees surrounding the area. And the plan is to remove the two white pines that are in decline and also this black cherry and to relocate uh, the black gum um, to allow more sun exposure. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the open space viewing from the um, parking area. Drinking fountain. You can see the two white pine and the picnic shelter and the playground in the background. And this is a view south towards parking. You see the black cherry and the, uh, the black gum. So the design team, we, we look at some good example. Uh, this is a 103rd Street community garden in New York City. And the community garden is co-located with other amenity. Uh, playground, open space, and a basketball court. And people of different age groups can enjoy the park at the same time, seeing each other. Children can observe and learn from gardening while playing. This is a close up. And here's another example, the Edible Academy at the New York Botanic Garden. Garden plots are organized with a central walkway and there's a terrace for teaching, learning and picnicking. And um, there's a clear material hierarchy, um, defined beds and nice fence enclosure. So the park team studied what can fit at the site to fulfill the program needs while also trying to make this a nice feature uh, for the park. The plan includes total 28 uh, plots, 20 at 39 square feet and six slightly bigger at 46 square feet and two ADA 
accessible plots at 21 square feet. And the garden uh, will be accessed directly from the parking lot and organized by a multi-purpose terrace and a five foot um, walkway and three foot, three foot walkway for the rest of the area, secondary walkway. Um, and there are walkway all around the peripheral to keep the plants from obstructing the fence and keep the garden tidy viewing from the surrounding park. And there's an area for storage, plant debris recycling and compost and the placeholder uh, for cistern. And there are also, um, these are the accessible plots and um, will be uh, fenced, uh, the 10 foot uh, fenced enclosure to keep the deers out. And there's a main gate, vehicular gate for gardening and maintenance and a kiosk um, at the entry to provide information, um, accessible picnic table, bench. Um, the plan is also to upgrade the parking lot to include accessible parking spaces and also renovate the drinking fountain and the terrace. Uh, to level the ground, uh, it will disturb a little less than 5,000 square feet. All drainage within the project site will be managed and direct, directed towards treatment. The goal is to minimize impervious surfaces while addressing the maintenance needs. The final stormwater management approach will be determined in the detailed design phase. You can see the, um, the orange highlighted area are the very flat area and um, and organize and connect to this main walkway and the parking lot. And the design intends to allow the, um, visual connection um, from the parking lot to the picnic shelter. And, um, and the intent is to use some sort of edging to contain growing area, to keep the walkway clean and organized. And the accessible uh, garden plots can be combined or individually located with um, at le least five foot uh, diameter uh, turning area. So in this case, um, the plots are um, separated and um, this option shows uh, the plots are combined. We will allow to incorporate another picnic table. And the team ex explored materials for paving and edging uh, that can support day-to-day -day operation and are sustainable and affordable, such as stone dust, wood chip, gravel with concrete edging, wood edging, engineered wood fiber, or crushed stone with concrete border. We haven't decided yet, but where these are the material we're looking at. And any loose material, uh, we recommend to have um, some kind of a geo grid to provide a subgrade support and install permanent fencing that is durable and aesthetically pleasing. And a multi-purpose terrace to support the garden operation and to also provide a nice place for gardeners to take a break, to share the produce or to share their ideas. So we are now um, obtain your input and 
um, we will make refinements to the plan in the winter and complete the details next spring and hope to start construction next summer. So these are the help, helpful links and um, how to reach us. And uh, feel free to contact any of us. We'll come together uh, to provide the answer to you. I will now turn it back to Michelle for the question and answer portion of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Ching Fong. So now we will have um, an opportunity for moderated Q and A, and um, I would have the <laughs> have the honor of moderating tonight's Q and A. So if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the Q and A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, and Sorry, I'm trying to show a grid. And we do have, tonight we do have additional park staff here to answer um, questions as it pertains to security or as it pertains to, so we do have Captain Nicole Adams here who is from Park Police who can address any security or safety concerns in the community garden. Um, and then we also have um, additional planning and development staff here who can answer other questions. Um, so there is one comment and question that is in the chat. And again, don't be shy. Please feel free to uh, ask questions tonight. Um, we want to be sure that we are providing as much information to community members as possible. And um, as Ching Fong stated, we, as a team, we will come together to provide additional answers um, as necessary. So um, first question says, thank you for the presentation. I'm curious as to whether the fenced area is locked or is it generally left open? So in all of our, um, in all of our community gardens, we do um, have, I think all of our community gardens except for one right now, we do have, um, combination locks on our gates. Most of the community gardens have um, like two pedestrian gates and then a service gate. And so we have a combination lock on there that is available to community gardeners that have a permit and they, they're supposed to be there. Um, and that combination is, is really only shared with community gardeners and park staff. Um, with park police if something happens. And we do, um, the garden is not open after, um, the garden hours are the same as park hours, so sunrise to sunset. So there is no entry into the garden after hours. Um, and even though there is a um, combination lock on the garden, the garden is always available um, to tour you just reach out to us and we can, we can meet you on site. Um, and all of our gardens also have volunteer liaisons that help us with, with tours or help us with other folks that may be visiting and want to see what's happening. Um, Cause this would be something very new for, for this community. What the next question is, what is the composition of the engineered wood fiber? So I'm going to, Tag one of our park development, um, and I'm assuming. Okay, Ching Fong, you came off. Um, the um, engineer wood fiber uh, is made of wood, and uh, we use this material as a playground safety surfacing. And what it is 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 a wood material with different fiber uh, size of um, fiber. So together, it provides a solid but cushioning. Uh, surface um, for 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 safety. So that simple answer is wood. And we have used our um, we have used engineered wood fiber 
in some of our other community gardens where we have created an accessible um, path to accessible gardening goods. Um, okay, next question or comment. I'm excited about the community garden. Thank you for the presentation. When will the community garden be available? 2022 or 2023? So at this time, based on our timeline, we are aiming to start construction in summer of 2022. Um, so we would probably have gardeners um, potentially in the garden or hopefully have an opening um, in fall of 2022, but gardeners would definitely be able to access the garden in 2023. Um, we have had some very mild falls. So um, the last community garden that we opened, um, we were able to open it in the spring and just get folks in there. As soon as we had enough people, um, people started, people were really eager and excited to start, start growing. So our goal is construction in summer 2022 um, and hopefully get some folks in there in the fall of 2022 and so that they can get started. And we do have a um, frequently asked question document that we can also share with attendees and put on the project page. Um, so if you were entering in the fall, you would pay for, you would most likely pay for your, your plot in the end of the fall, and then you would be good to go going into um, early 2023. Okay. Um, next question is how many items can be grown in a $35 purchase space? So in the $35 rented space, the sizes vary. Um, Xingfang, can you, can you go over or repeat the sizes again um, for each plot size? And in, in that space, after she reminds us of what the sizes are, I'll give you some examples of how many things can be grown. Right, so um, this is 39 square feet, 46 and 21. Um, okay. In this concept, this you know the size can be modified and refined. Just for this exercise, we're looking at how many plants and how big can fit. So this is just a, a scenario that um, we have right now. So in a space that in in our smaller spaces. Um, one of the techniques that a lot of gardeners have used, one example is Nolte. Um, there's all accessible raised beds there. So the space is um, only 21 square feet. The same, the same in the concept, in this concept, the accessible gardening table. So they have 21 square feet. And with 21 square feet, you can use the square foot gardening technique some things in one square foot or one square, you can grow a lot of things. Um, like for example, you can grow 10 plants of carrots or in um, some plants they require a little bit more space. So it really depends on how gardeners map and design their space. Um, but in 30 plus square feet, you can grow a lot of different things. And um, in this community garden concept, there would be an educational opportunity for, for gardeners and for community members, because a lot of people are not used to growing in such a small space. But if um, there are also resources that we reference through University of Maryland Extension, um, we also work with a local partner called Harvest Share. They have different workshops throughout the season and we share those workshops with people. So there's a lot of different opportunities. Um, and I don't, I don't wanna say one number because it can really, um, it really depends on how ambitious the gardener is. Yeah, and also things can, you know, the food forest concept, you grow things at different level. Uh, you can grow 
strawberry as a ground cover. You can grow tomato on top of that. And also different um, plants have different harvest, cooler season, you grow certain things. So um, there will be a lot of opportunity to grow different crops at different time. Exactly. Um, and if you, that kind of technique is called succession planning. Um, so maybe you have seen like snow peas planted in early spring. And then the, once those are ready, person takes them out, they plant another row and they just keep going. So their plot is still producing throughout the whole season. Um, so, you know, we are going to learn together in this space and share different concepts and share different ideas. Um, the next question is, are the plots assigned on, a, on the first come first, first come first serve basis? And once they are assigned, are they kept indefinitely um, until the person decides they no longer want it? So at this time, our program, um, plots are assigned as a, on a first come first serve basis. Um, we do have a renewal period, so folks who are, excuse me, folks who, who do register within our program um, in February, they are able to renew their gardening permit at the end of the year. Um, and some people, they don't keep it indefinitely um, because things happen. <laughs> uh, some people they do not follow the conditions of use and their, um, their gardening privileges are revoked, unfortunately. Um, some people suffer from illnesses, but we do not currently have a, um, I guess, term limits or you know, a stopping point for, for people who are really interested and excited about gardening. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Um, in a concept like this, and even at um, Nolte, we have explored the option of, let's see how it goes in the first year and then potentially opening it, opening it up and doing more community outreach to reach more families and reach more clients so that we are you know, share, sharing the wealth of the community garden program and allowing other folks to, to garden and enjoy this amenity. Um, okay, are there any additional questions? I don't see any in the chat or in the Q&A portion, but if anyone has additional questions, please feel free to put them in the, I think I did this wrong. Um, please feel free to put them in the Q&A box and we would be happy to answer them. And if there are, okay, awesome. Another question. Um, hi, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? Um, please advise if this recording will be shared with the group. This recording will be shared with, um, with the group. Uh, any updates to the project or to um, the community garden program? We are going to share all updates related specifically to this project um, to the Edgewood, Edgewood project page, which the link was dropped in the chat earlier and we can reshare that link. Um, and then if there are additional questions about the community garden program, you can visit the website or you can send an email to myself, Ching Fong or Christina and we can help answer those questions. And the content of today's presentation will be posted on the project webpage tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so people will have access to the um, PowerPoint presentation and um, we'll, we'll have access to the PowerPoint presentation and to um, the recording of tonight's community meeting. Another 
question or comment. It's so exciting to see these kinds of projects happening in the county. Thank you for the great presentation. I totally agree. I hope we have more projects. And Christina highlighted some of um, the other sites that, that came out in our site suitability study. So we're really excited to hopefully see some more of those implemented in the future. And the another question in the chat is, can people do composting in the garden? Um, so this is a yes and no question. Um, we don't allow a large like um, three tier or three bin system within the garden because unfortunately in the garden there are pests um, and there are rodents and bulls and groundhogs and foxes and other things. So we really don't allow um, just raw eggshells and um, orange peels and things of that nature in the community garden plots. Um, we do support community gardeners um, getting one of the, uh, I'm forgetting what they're called, um, one of the either smaller tumblers or um, the county, the uh, DEP sometimes gives out the um, compost bins. They're just like a small roll of this material that um, some of our gardeners use. And they are, people are able to do that kind of composting, which is kind of more so the layering lasagna kind of composting. Um, and we have people who, it has to be contained within the, within the garden. So um, if you do have, we just don't wanna see some raw, non-decomposed um, things within the garden. So we also have people that do smaller scale composting at home and then they use that, that finished compost pro product in their community garden plots. Um, and as far as compost on this concept, it's actually a finished product from our um, parks department. So we call that our green recycling material. So in addition to the plant debris that is collected from all the community gardens and um, other parks facilities, um, we have staff that work on a large scale operation um, and that compost or that finished product is then delivered back out into the garden. So this is another benefit to the program, um, the cost savings benefit to the program and to residents um, they don't have to go out and buy their own leaf grow or their own compost materials. So I hope that answered the question. Um, and I'm happy to share more about how that works in greater detail in our program um, offline or via email. And we're happy to take additional questions um, if there are any. And again, um, this recording will be um, posted to our project webpage, which the link is in the chat. And we will also share updates there. Excuse me. So I will leave this, uh, leave the chat open and leave our chat up or leave our um, program open for a few more minutes. We do um, want to respect people's time and we're, we're happy to keep answering questions. But if everyone has gotten their questions out, um, we are happy to grant you all a little bit more time to your evening.
And additionally, if any um, park staff um, would like to add any comments to tonight's presentation, please feel free to jump in at this time. Um, but if uh, my division is very excited to be able to support the community garden program um, by helping with the design. And the intent is to make this um, first um, designed community garden project to be like a little prototype. And so we want this to turn out nice. We want this to really enhance the park and want to encourage people to participate. So um, we're working together. We want to um, make the best out of this for your community. Okay, so I think we have answered all of the questions um, that have been submitted. And if there are additional questions after um, the community meeting tonight, again, um, my information is in the chat. Christina Sasaki's information is in the chat and Ching Fong Chen's information is also in the chat. There's, excuse me, also the community gardens email address, which is communitygardens at montgomeryparks.org. We can drop that in the chat again. Um, so if you have any other questions after tonight, um, or even if you have comments that you would like to share, you are welcome to send those to us and we will be happy to address those. So with that in closing, um, I want to Thank my co-presenters and thank all the park staff who did attend tonight and who um, have contributed to getting this project to this, this phase. And um, Christina, do you want to say any last, last words? <laughs> we're going to do it and we're going to help finding more places so we can have more community gardens. Yes. So. Um, I just want to say good night to everyone. And again, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to your additional questions or comments. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, everyone.